All right, so we uh, we have the S50 cams installed now, and the next step is getting the engine timed. Uh, so one of the things that you're going to be doing uh, on this step is you need to make sure your camshafts are at top dead center, and you need to make sure that your uh, crankshaft is at top dead center. You do not want to time this engine uh, before you verify that you've accomplished both of those. I'm going to show you what to look for in regards to uh, top dead center, uh, the marks, where they are, uh, what they mean. Uh, I already have the cam locks on the top, but we'll, uh, we'll go over it briefly what to look for. So the way that we know which are uh, we're at top dead center is the lobes of the camshafts on cylinder one should be pointing towards one another. The uh, dots, which you can see here on top of the camshaft, should be facing up. And uh, the cam locks, once they're in place, that'll lock it in. And then the last thing we look for is to make sure our crankshaft is a top dead center. And you'll see this line here and this line here. Those should be right in alignment with one another, which this is. All right, the first thing we're going to do is bring up our exhaust cam sprocket. They're arrows and they should point pretty much straight up if not off a little bit. We're just going to bring this into place real quick. Now, <clears throat> now one thing to note here, uh, BMW's <clears throat> repair information uh, suggests that when you initially put this cam gear on, uh, the holes in the slot should be towards the left. However, that doesn't work if you have a brand new timing chain. Um, there's not enough uh, wear between inch length to allow for that. And I'm pretty sure the repair manual is built off of the premise that you would be reusing your timing chains. So um, what you want this to end up like is you want these holes to be lined up when you have your tensioner installed. Uh, so they need to be dead in the middle, which we're not. So we're just going to bring it over a tooth. Like I said, this chain is super tight. All right, so we're, uh, we're dead in the center with our arrows pointing up and down. And like I said, there, there is no slop uh, with this new chain. It's just not there. Um, normally, you'd be able to move this back and bias it to the left, but the reason why they have that in the manual is the reason why you would bias, uh, bias this notch here to the left is once you install tension or put tension on the timing chain tensioner, it's going to pull the cam gear slightly to the left and then it will be lined up in the center. However, uh, with the brand new chain, there just isn't enough room in there. So it's just not a thing with a brand new chain. I think if I put the stock chain back in, uh, we would have that play. Um, but since it's a brand new chain, we just don't have it. So next, we're going to install the dummy tensioner into the cylinder head. Now this is only designed to put tension on that rail uh, for installation of everything else. So we're going to go ahead and just go finger tight here. And you know, I'm putting tension on this guide rail. You should be able to see it moving or at least the chain moving. And we've completely tensioned this. You know, there's no slack in the chain whatsoever at this point. And uh, that center position did not move at all. So <clears throat> that's pretty much dead set where it's going to be. And uh, now we have our exhaust cam, everything lined up here at top dead center where we need it. All right, so now that we have total tension on the uh, primary timing chain, we're going to install this lower guide. Now this is a replacement uh, because the original one was pretty severely grooved, so um, did not really see the point in reusing it. Using a little bit of our uh, Liquid Molly assembly paste, just put a nice thin coating here where the chain will ride and that will give us nice uh, startup lube for when the engine fires for the first time. Uh, our long side drops down like so. Long bolt drops down on the intake side and then our short bolt uh, fits in here 
on the exhaust side. And these bolts are the E8s. They have a six millimeter thread on them, so they're gonna be torqued to 10 newton meters as a final torque. But I'm just gonna run these down right now. Now this guide is also um, the upper timing chain guide as well. The upper timing chain rides right through there. Then we're gonna go ahead and torque to 10 newton meters. Our next step is to install the camshaft position sending wheel, which only fits on one way, obviously the nub right there. And then we have a shim that fits there. It's four millimeter, and obviously you can see the markings from originally being installed. We're just gonna go ahead and reinstall it the way that it was. Like so. Then we have these stud bolts that thread in. And then these stud bolts, as you can see, uh, they look very similar to the stud bolts used for the valve cover, but they're not the same. And when we thread these in, we're, thread we're threading in the long side into the camshaft. Next step, uh, we're going to install a brand new upper timing chain tensioner. Our other ones were pretty grooved, so we're just going to go ahead and replace it. You got three different bolt sizes. You got one long, one short, and two medium. The medium go directly on top. The long one goes right here through the front. And the short one goes all the way in the back. My recommendation is to get all of these threaded by hand, and then you can tighten them down with a ratchet. Uh, torque spec on these will be 10 newton meters. It's a 10 millimeter head, but it's a six millimeter thread size. We're also going to apply a nice thin layer of this Tukumali assembly lube right across the top of this guide rail here. Just give some lubrication on startup. Next, we bring in our upper timing chain along with its associated sprockets. And once you get it in, uh, it'll pretty much hold into place. You'll notice with the uh, cam gears installed, uh, you have a certain amount of travel that the cam gear can go. And what you want to see is you want to see that when the cam gear is going all the way to the right, these bolt holes, or in this case stud in this hole, are aligned all the way to the left. And when you go all the way to the right, or I'm sorry, you go all the way, uh, all the way to the left, that the bolt hole is all the way into the right side of the opening or the window. All right, so we're going to now install some of our additional hardware. Um, you want these sprockets pretty much centered up. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to first install our two millimeter shim 
And then we have our spring washer. Spring washer is concave. You can probably see that. Uh, the outer diameter has to be touching the two millimeter shim. And then the last piece is <clears throat> the last piece is going to be the four millimeter shim. And we get a nice little stack like that. So we're going to thread on these 10 millimeter nuts. These will end up getting torqued to 10 newton meters. Just going to draw these down a little bit at a time, compressing that spring washer. Now there's a version of this where it's only a, I believe it's a four millimeter shim, uh, but uh, I don't know how many of those are floating around out there. Most of these cars have the uh, dual um, dual plate with the uh, two shims with that washer. It's the most typical. Like I said, these nuts are torqued to 10 newton meters. go. The last thing, we have this washer for the exhaust that goes on with these four E10 bolts. Now these E10 bolts are going to be torqued down after we get the Vanos on, otherwise it would be absolutely impossible to move the sprocket and the chain over, it just would not happen. It would be fighting all of the resistance that the spring washer over here puts on the assembly. So what we're going to do here is Thread these bolts in pretty much finger tight. And these will get torqued after the fact. Once we get the Vanos on, we'll be able to torque them. So we're going to go ahead and install a new uh, Vanos gasket. And the studs will hold it on. Just make sure that it is sitting on the dowels. So you remember how we were set up in the middle before? Well, we're going to go ahead and push everything over to the right with our Vanos tool. And now we're going to slide our Vanos into place. Just make sure it gets lined up here on the studs. And we're just going to rotate it. So I'm just rotating. So you see how as I was rotating, it got caught. That's what we want. Still not catching. There we go. So you see as I rotated over, it just pulled it right in. That's what we want. And then, we'll just bring it all the way over. And we're there. Now the Vanos is installed. Going to install some of the Vanos hardware here. It's basically a bunch of 10 millimeter nuts.
We're going to remove the uh, tensioner pin. There we go. And now we can also install our real tensioner, which is going to be the S52 hydraulic tensioner. It's also it's for the S54 as well, but it's going to replace our uh, uh, sprung version that comes standard on this engine. So basically, there's two different tensioner assemblies. One has a spring, which uh, puts tension on the tensioner, and the other one is hydraulic. Uh, the hydraulic one is is the upgrade in this case. So here's here's the difference. This is the old tensioner, and you can see it has a spring on the inside. So there's two pieces there. The spring wears out, and over time, uh, you lose tension on the guide rail here. This is just a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, no spring inside there or anything. It's all hydraulic pressure. So uh, this can maintain tension uh, much better at higher RPMs. That's the upgrade. I put a tiny dab of assembly lube on the end, so when it goes up against the tensioner, there will be some lubrication for it. I'm installing a new uh, crush washer for this as well. And uh, that is 32, uh, 32 millimeter. I am going to torque this later. Uh, I just don't have a deep 32 with me right now. I have a shallow which doesn't cover the entire cylinder. So uh, I'm not going to worry about that. It's not a big deal. could do that at any point. Next we're going to um, torque these cam gear bolts to 15 newton meters. I'll do it in a crisscross pattern. And these are the E10s. So we're tight there. I just barred the engine over by hand and everything feels good. There's no uh, no obstructions, everything moves smoothly the way that you'd want it to. So that's good. We're going to reinstall our Vanos plugs. And these get torqued to 50 newton meters. We'll go ahead and torque all of these 10 mils for the Vanos to 10 newton meters. When you reinstall the engine um, mount bracket or the engine support or lift bracket, which goes here, that's a bigger 13 millimeter headed fastener. I want to say it's 8 mil um, thread size. This will have a different torque spec. It also is part of the thermostat housing, but uh, we're not there yet. <laughs> Those are all the accessory installs. Um, we're just looking to get the valve cover back on, brand new spark plugs in, all that good stuff.